seated. Wow. Man, that makes even Baptists want to shout and raise your hands. Even, even on spring break, time change Sunday. Amen. Wow, that ought to get your juices flowing, your energy going, and just have you ready to, to receive the word this morning. Amen. Man, what a great Sunday morning it's been. Hey, it's time for our kids. Miss Kathy is going to be right down here in front. We're going to change it up just a little bit. So, Miss Kathy, if you'll stand right here. If any of the kids, kindergarten, first and second, if you will walk down here to the front. Kindergarten, first and second graders, and then Miss Kathy is going to gather you all up, and then she's going to take you to children's church. Miss Kathy, we got some coming over on your left. Here they come. Cut through there if y'all want. There you go. All right. Well, you guys all have a great time, and we'll see you all a little bit later. Amen? Hey, aren't you glad after something like that that you're connected to the Lord? Connected to God. Man, that's what this is all about. Connecting to serve in 2021. We're connecting to God, connecting to the church, connecting to people. And my friends, this is the important one, connecting to God. And that is what we're doing here is part of that connecting. And my friends, it will literally change your life when you have this connection. Today we want to see why this connecting that I've been talking about for the last several weeks, why is it even important? Because I truly believe that if we're not careful, even in the church, we can kind of lose the importance of having that connection between us and God. We can kind of take it for granted, if you will, and think it's not a big deal. But then when we look and we see that there is a reason for us to do it, there is a reason that God wants us to do it. And so today we're going to be looking at the connecting to God. The title is The Vine and the Branch. The Vine and the Branch. That's what we're going to be looking at today. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of John, chapter 15. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 5. This is a very familiar passage here, but this again is to show us why it's so important that this idea of connecting to God and then making sure that we're doing it. Because as I shared even last week, when we talk about this idea of total surrender, I believe with all my heart, because I fall victim of it myself, that there are times that we think we're doing something that we're not. We think we're totally surrendered, but yet when we really look at it, we're not. We think we are truly connecting to God on a regular basis, and then all of a sudden we look around and we see why our lives have changed and wonder why we're not feeling the power of God, why we're not feeling the things that we're going to be talking about about here in just a little bit, the fruits of the Spirit. And we, we, we have to then look at it and say, well, maybe, maybe, just maybe we're not as connected in the sense that we are supposed to be. So in this text this morning, John chapter 15, starting at verse 1, we're going to be reading about this connection, this idea of being uh, with God and abiding in Jesus and letting Him make a difference in our lives. So let's go ahead and stand in honor of reading God's Word, John chapter 15, Starting at verse 1, and it says here, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the world of which I have spoken to you, of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me with, and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for just allowing us to have that experience in the praise and worship that we did. And Father, I thank you that you call us into service. That Father, you call us to be connected to you through Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray with all my heart that if there's anybody here, or anybody that may be watching this on live stream, that Father, they're, they're not sure today, or they may even know that they're not saved, that Father, you would call them to salvation this morning. That Father, they could truly experience everything that we just sang about. Everything that we experienced while we were singing and, 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 Lord, just worshiping you. But also pray, Father, for those who may be saved, but for whatever reason are not abiding as you desire for us to do. And, Father, I pray that by the end of this service today, 
that we will not have known we've been in your presence and that our lives will be changed. And Father, I pray that the words that I'm about to say are not my words. I pray, Father, they're yours. And I pray that this is not a message that I developed on my own, but Father, it's the message that you gave me to share. And that, Father, the response from everyone would be as you desire for it to be. And Father, it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. As we look here, we see the idea of why this is so important. I want to look first at verse 5 before we get back to the rest of the text that I want to be sharing with you this morning. And verse 5 is very important because it's verse 5 that kind of puts everything together that Jesus is trying to get us to understand about how he works in our lives and about how we are to be connected to him. Now, in verse 5, Jesus says something clear. Now, on, on, on the screen here, I've taken that and I've put the emphasis or, or parentheses in there. That's my addition, just to show you what Jesus is trying to say. Jesus said here, I, Jesus, am the vine. You, Christian, you're the branches. Now, you say, well, that's, why is that such a big deal? Because I want you to understand, Jesus is trying to get a point here to us. He says, I am the vine. You're the branch. Can I tell you something that the vine is more important than the branch? The vine, without the vine, there is no branch. Jesus wants us to understand because sometimes I think, I think sometimes even the church, we might get that confused. We think we're the, we're the vine. We think Jesus is the branch from us and, and it's all kind of cool. And we're the ones really in charge. We do what we want. We act like what we want. As I shared with you last week, this idea of total surrender, that is so foreign even to Christians in the church. So Jesus is trying to get them to understand, I am the vine, you're the branch. And he tells them, without me, without the vine, you can't do anything. So what we knew is we need him to be effective in our lives. That's what he's trying to get us to understand. If you as a Christian, and, and, and we know here he's speaking to the Christian because he even talked to the, the apostles and said, you are already clean, but now I want you to understand that when you're with me that you're going to be very effective. In our lives, and he's talking to the individual, I know a lot of times we wanted to put everything in here as the church. Well, it is the church. But folks, can I tell you today, this verse is for each one of us as individuals. He says, I am the vine, you individual Christian, you're the branch, and apart from me, you can't do anything. That you can't be effective in your life as a, as a Christian trying to bring people to Jesus. That we can't be effective if we're not connected to Jesus. We've got to have that connection to him. He says that's how it all works and that we need to understand this idea of being connected to him. He says there, without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do it, not do it at all. So we see this idea then also is the idea of the Christian's life and what he's trying to get us to understand is the Christian's life can be empty. The Christian life can be empty. And, and this is what we're trying to look at today as we see this idea of, of a Christian. We think that a Christian, it's impossible for us to, to be empty lives. We think everything is all fine and good no matter what. As long as I'm saved, everything is right. But my friends, can I tell you today that a Christian's life can be empty? That's why the Bible talks to us about not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. That's why Christians can have anxiety in our lives. That's why Christians can be fearful. That's why Christians can experience frustrations in our lives. That's why we can even develop in our lives, if we're not careful, we can develop a sense of hopelessness. Because Jesus is trying to get us to understand right here, as this says, he is the vine, I am the branch, that from him everything flows through me, that if I'm not connected to him, then that stuff that I'm supposed to be getting, that stuff that energizes me, that stuff that encourages me, that stuff that helps me, it's not getting to me. And so we look at this and we see that without him my life is going to be empty. And it's the, as we see in this picture, that's the Holy Spirit, and we're going to get back to that in just a few moments, but it's the Holy Spirit that produces the fruit in me. It's not me doing it, so I can't do it on myself. That's what Jesus is trying to say. If you want the fruits of the Spirit, if you want the Holy Spirit working in you, you can't make it happen on your own. And so often, I believe that we in the church try to do that. 
Many try to do it ourselves, and we do it in worldly ways, that we try to have my own stuff happening. And then we wonder, why are we not nearly as effective? Because again, it's the Holy Spirit that does it through me. The second thing that I want us to look at is why this is so. And in order to do that, we have to go back up to verse 1. And we see some key words here that I want us to look at. The first key word is the idea of the true vine. Now Jesus said here, I am the true vine. I'm the true vine. What does this mean? Because Jesus was talking to the apostles, and what he was trying to get them to understand is he says, guys, look. You have a whole lot of stuff that you're trying to get over here. And one of the things is how they identified. And there's a lot of times, even in the church, that we identify with the wrong things. What Jesus was trying to get his apostles to say is that, look, you're all identifying because here's the thing. The Jewish people at this time thought it was a pretty big deal to be a Jew. As a matter of fact, they wouldn't ever even talk to Gentiles. And the apostles, if you'll remember, whenever Jesus wanted to go into certain towns, he'd say, well, we can't go there. Because those aren't Jewish people. So he's trying to get them to understand, you're identifying as a Jew. But not only are you identifying as God's chosen people, the Jewish people, but you're also identifying by the Jewish law. Because there were a lot of of the uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, remember that was one of their problems, is they weren't following the law. People weren't following the law. And they said, this is how you identify, is that you follow this way. But Jesus is trying to get them to understand when he says, I am the true vine, What he's trying to get them to see is the fact that it's the genuine vine. Because these folks were trying to trust in something that wasn't real. And can I get you to think about something here, my friends? That even today in the church, our identity must not be in someone or something else other than Jesus Christ. That sometimes we want to identify by the church. Sometimes I want to identify by my baptism. Sometimes I want to identify by my position in the church. Sometimes I want to to, to talk about all the identifications I have everywhere in the world except through Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, my friends, that there's no identity that we need to stand on other than our identity as to who we are through Jesus Christ. That's what makes us different. Me being a church member doesn't make me any different than the world. Me being a a pastor doesn't make me any different than the rest of the world. What makes me different is the Christ that lives in me. And so they were having problems with this identifying. So he said, if you really want to know, I am the true vine. You can try to get all your stuff from anywhere in the world, but it's not going to happen. It's when we begin to do that, even as Christians, that we as Christians can lead an empty life. It is even possible for Christians to have a sense of hopelessness when we're not abiding on the vine. He said, well, it's not possible. That's not possible. It is. That's why Jesus said, apart from me, you can't do anything. You can't have fulfillment in life. You can't have any of these fruit that we've been talking about. And so then we look and we see not only a true vine, but the second word that I want to look at is in me. In me. Now, there's a lot of words that we, that we need to identify here in the church A couple of those words that are very important are when we talk about propitiation, that Jesus was our propitiation. He was the act. It was the act of his dying on the cross. When we talk about reconciliation, that we've been reconciled, we've been brought back into uh, the, the fellowship with God through Jesus Christ, that we've been redeemed, the redemption, that we've been purchased, we've been bought with a price. But what I'm wanting you to understand here, Jesus is saying that it's all of those things are good, but there's this idea of in me, which is the salvation, the whole whole spectrum of everything that we're talking about is salvation through Jesus Christ. He said that if you are in me through the vine, that's in me. We talked a, a couple of weeks ago. I even brought out a chair and I said, you know, there's a whole lot of times that people like to come and we like to talk about the chair. We want to say, I believe that chair can hold me up. I believe that chair can do all these things. And we talk about the chair. We read about the chair. We write about the chair. We sing songs about the chair. We do all this thing, but the chair is useless to me until I get in the chair. Once I place myself in the chair, now I experience the chair. My friends, I believe there's a lot of people in church that are experiencing a whole lot of things about Jesus 
But he says that you must abide in me. Not anything else. It's not anything else that saves you. It's not what you identify with other than Jesus Christ. So we look and we see these things that the entire spectrum of salvation is what we're dealing with. The third word that I want to look at is the idea of abide in verse 3. He says, you are already clean. I'm sorry, because of the word which I spoke to you. Abide in me in verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. So this is, again, the idea of abide. And what is abide? Abide is that constant communion with God. Listen to me. This, my friend, is very important. And this is where I believe even a lot of Christians miss out. Because we, this idea of constant communion, this idea of, of praying without ceasing, this idea of being with God and working with Him in all of our lives and doing those things that He wants us to do. And I hear people all the time say, well, you know what, preacher? I don't have to be in church to be a Christian. I don't have to read the Bible to be a Christian. I don't have to do all these things and be a Christian. Well, you're right, but Jesus said, unless you are abiding in me, the fruit that you bear is not possible. So yes, you cannot be in church and still be a Christian, but I promise you, you're not going to be bearing the fruit. Because that's part, listen, you say, well, is that true? Well, listen, because the second part of the abiding is the idea of acting in obedience. Right? If you love me, do what I ask you to do. So he says that there's a lot of commands, and every time we talk about commands, every time I think we mention commandments, what do we think of? The ten. The top ten. Well, can I tell you, those are not the only commandments. If you look in the book of Philippians, as I shared a few weeks ago, there's a lot of commandments there. One of them is love. Love each other. Do you know what? Can I tell you, that's not a suggestion. That's Jesus saying, that's what you ought to be doing. He even says, love your enemy. He also even says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as some do, or which is the manner of some. Hmm. So if he's telling us to do these things, he said, this is the abiding. This is why I tell people all the time, we need to be reading the Word of God on a daily basis. We need to be praying on a daily basis. Why? Because, my friends, that's part of the abiding. Doing what he wants us to do. Constant communion and acting in obedience. All of those things that he wants us to be doing that he commands us to do. Love your enemy. Serve one another. Encourage one another. Let good communion come out of your face. Rather than tearing down and and, and, and hurting people. See, these. do you understand what I'm saying? That's commandment. That's part of the abiding. So when I'm not doing those things, which is abiding, which then produces the fruit, then how can my fruit be produced as well as he wants it to be produced if I'm rejecting some of those things? And this is where I even said last week that a lot of times we want to follow God, but only in places I wanted to follow him in the first place. I will go where you want me to go only if I wanted to go there anyway. I will do what you want me to do if only I wanted to do them anyway. I will say what you want me to say only if I wanted to say them anyway. I will act the way you want me to act if only I wanted to act that way in the first place. So all of these things is we keep the reservations for ourselves to do whatever we want to do. But this abiding, I mean, can I get you to understand? Abiding is 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 a deep word. It's that constant communion with God and fellowshipping. And then acting and doing what he wants us to do. But again, we have so many people say, I don't have to do these things. Well, that's what he just said. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, you can't do it by yourself. We need Jesus. And then the last word I want to very quickly get to is fruit. The fourth word that I want to get to is the fruit. He says, if anyone does not abide in me, he casts out a branch, and, 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 and it's withered, and they gather in them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. This is what he's talking about. This is what happens, is that we dry up. We don't produce the fruit. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branch. He who abides in me, and I in him, guess what he says, bears 
much fruit. Now, I want you to understand something about this word fruit. This idea of the word fruit is not salvation. Fruit is the result of being saved. Because he already told them, you've already been made clean. We've already been saved, amen? The fruit is not salvation. That salvation is the act. The fruit is what we get as a result of being saved. So we look at this and we say, well, you can't bear that fruit unless you're abiding in him. So it's not salvation, and this is what we're talking about here again. We look and we see we have Jesus the vine, we have we as the branch, then that fruit, we're not making more branches. We're making fruit. And so the idea that we look at even with that is the fact that it's not necessarily just the idea of salvation, but it's also not winning souls. It's not just winning souls. What we're talking about here is the fruit of the Spirit. So what, what is it then? If we're, if we're wanting to really sum it all up, what is it that he's talking about that we gain and that we should be producing when we are connected to him, when we are abiding in him? What is it that we get? Well, it's very clear. He says in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, if we're not really sure what it is, I'm about to tell you what the fruit is. Because it's again, it's not bringing people to Jesus. It's what's going on inside of us. He says, the fruit of the Spirit that we've just been talking about, that product that we get as a result of our being saved, he says, is what? First one is love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Do you realize that we can't have true love unless we're connected to the true vine? Because that's what we get when we're connected to Christ. As a result of my salvation, I should love. As a matter of fact, Jesus even said that it's by you loving each other, by the fruit of that spirit, that people are even going to know that I'm real. So the fruit that we are producing, should be producing in us, is fruit of the spirit is joy, love, and then joy. Do you realize we as Christians should have joy? And we will have joy if I'm connected. Now listen, that doesn't mean everything's going to go smooth. Man, if somebody's out there telling you, oh, if you have Christ in your life, everything is going to be good. You don't have to worry about anything. All the bills are going to be paid. You're going to, you're going to have plenty of stuff. God wants you to be rich. He wants you to be happy. He wants you this and he wants you that. Folks, that's, that's not the gospel, amen? amen? That he wants us connected to him and through him no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter how difficult it is. And my friends, listen to me. We as Christians are going to go through difficult times. Amen. But he says, if the fruit of the Spirit is in me and being produced in me, it will produce in me love, joy, peace, that even in difficult times, I can still have peace. Why? Why can, how can we have, as individuals have peace when we go through difficult times? Jesus said, if we'll look just back up in, in chapter 14, Jesus is saying, I want to give you my peace. My peace I give you, not as the world gives it. I don't want to give you the world peace. I want to give you my peace. So that even in difficult situations, my friends, we can still have peace. We can have peace through him if I'm abiding in him. That no matter what's going on. But then it says long-suffering or, 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 or patience. Kindness. Wow. Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All of these things are the fruit of the Spirit. This is what Jesus is talking about. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, then you will produce much of that. And can I tell you, listen to me, it's that right there that we've been talking about. That's what's going to make people see Jesus in us. That's why he says, I want you to produce much of that. Because it's as much of that as you produce, people are going to be attracted to that. I shared... In uh, my, my Bible study on Sunday night, so I was going through 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. Well, in 3rd John, it talked about three church members in the church. And it talked about two of them were pretty good, and then the third one was not. And, and the point that was made in the book, he says, the church, isn't it amazing that in a church, you can have, lots of people have, 
All of that. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, great people. But also in that same body, you can have the meanest, coldest, rudest, most rude people in, the, in, in society. How is that possible? Fruit. Fruit. It is our fruit that people will see, are we real? You don't believe me? Read it again. I didn't make this stuff up. The fruit of the Spirit is as a result of our being saved and then abiding in Him. Apart from Him, apart from Him, it is not possible for us to do these things. Oh, we might, we might change our lives a little bit and act better. We can act better. How many of you got, ever got, got ready to get on your kids and they go, ho, oh, oh, I'll do better, I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop. Right? Now, I remember one time driving down the road and, and uh, my youngest daughter, Stephanie, man, Stephanie was, she, she was kind of our little mouthy child. And I remember she was back there mouthy and I said, look, I'm going to give you up right up there and you better stop. If I, if I get to that sign, we're driving, I said, if I get to that sign... And you're still carrying on. I'm, I'm going to pull this car over. All right. You, guess what she did? Got past that sign. And guess what Stephanie was doing? I pull the car over. And you know what? She starts screaming. I'll stop, Daddy. I'll stop. I'll stop. But too late. And you know what? On her own, she still didn't stop. As a matter of fact, it took a great act of Jesus producing fruit in her life that she stopped. (laughs) We'll say, God, I'll do better. Let me do it on my own. I can act different. I can, man, I can start loving people. I can start having joy. I can start having peace. I can start having this patience. I can start having kindness. I can be kind. I can be, oh, I'll be good. God, I'll be good. I promise I'll be good. But if we're doing it on ourselves, by ourselves, guess what? Jesus said you can't do that on your own. But man, when we abide in him, when we are connected, now the fruit of the Spirit will be produced in us. By, not us, but by the Holy Spirit working in us. Then the world will see That Jesus is real to me. Not because I'm identifying with anything other than Jesus. And that fruit is being made and people see it. And my fruit will testify for me. The Bible even says you will know them by what? Their fruit. fruit. Why is it so important? Why is it so important that we're connected? Because everything about what we do for Christ is done through that. That we are connected to Him. And not only connected, but that we're abiding on a regular basis. So that people will see Jesus, not just what I say, but they'll see Jesus in every piece of who I am. That's how they'll see Jesus. I'd like you to bow your head as we step into this moment and this time. If you're here or you even watching on this on this live stream, if you're here today and and you don't know. You don't know if you're saved, you don't know that you've ever been connected to God right here, right now, my friend, this is the time. This is the time that you can turn to him right now and you can call out, Jesus, I trust you, I believe in you, and God, I want to commit my life to you, I want to to surrender to you. Forgive me of my sin and I claim Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I believe he is the true vine. And I want to identify no longer in my action, no longer in my position, but I want to abide in you and identify in Jesus. My friend, if you're saying that right now, would you just call on his name? And in just a moment, I'll be down front. I want to pray with you about it. You can call our church office and someone will visit with you. Oh, that you could know Jesus as your Savior this morning.
But maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. Or maybe at home you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. But man, I, 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 I sense this fruit of the Spirit has not been, been produced in me in a while. I can tell by my attitude, by my thoughts, by my feelings, by how I deal with people. God, I need, I need that fruit produced in me. And maybe I've, I've, I've started doing away with those things of abiding. Maybe I've not been studying the Word. I've been, not been praying and reading and not been attending worship or Bible studies and not been fellowshipping. And I've just not been doing what He wants. And I know the difference. Well, today, call on His name and say, God, I want to be connected back to you again. I want the fruit of the Spirit to be so evident in my life so it can be evident in our church so that people can be attracted to Jesus because of me. That they will identify my fruit being from you and you alone. God, I can't do it on my own. And I've been doing it for too long. Today, I surrender. I surrender. My friend, in just a moment, we're going to sing. I want to ask you to stand in just a moment. When you do, would you, if God's speaking to your heart, would you come? Or right there where you are or at home, would you, would you surrender to him? God, produce in me your 